Have you ever wanted Factorio mixed with Animal Crossing? Wait, what? That's what it says on the email. Kind of confusing, really. Uh, let's try that again. Ahem. Have you ever wanted an automation game where you program an army of robots to carry out tasks so you don't have to? Well, that's this game. Autonauts is one of them automation games. You make stuff that makes stuff for you that makes other stuff for you while you add more stuff and watch your automated empire of stuff operate. That is the... The game starts with your character, an Autonaut, being blasted off to an uncolonized world with the goal of, well, colonizing it. You pick up some sticks and rocks and make a bench and an axe. You can use the axe to cut trees into logs, and then you can cut the logs into planks, and then you can cut the planks into poles. It's gonna take a while to make some stuff. That is, until you build your first robot out of wood and an acorn? But I'm not gonna judge here, you know, if it works, it works. To get the robot to do something, you set it to record mode and then you do something. It records your actions and can repeat them. You can also insert various conditions for commands to loop over and over. Do this until the storage is filled up. Oh, well, I guess I didn't do that right. Do that until your hands are full. Do this forever. The robots have a limited memory, however, so you have to work as smart as you can. Or don't. You can always make more robots. You're gonna need a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. None of the resources you need are really limited. You can plant more trees, you can dig stone out of the ground, you can make more food, and so on. The progression system in the game starts when you build a colonist incubator, which is kind of creepy. You turn the knob on a dispenser and a colonist seed comes out. You throw the seed and some food into the incubator and, uh, you've created human life? If you feed the colonists, you get their love. I mean, their love. You can use this love to research new technology levels, unlocking new buildings, robots, upgrades, and you get the idea. Every tech level, you need to provide colonists with additional things and feed them better food. At first, they're happy with berries straight from the bush, but then all of a sudden they want spiced berries and housing? The amount of love you need to research new technology goes up exponentially every level, but so does the amount that you get from keeping colonists happy at that level. So you definitely need to keep them happy if you want to research things in a reasonable amount of time. Here, for example, to get level 3 food, you need an upgraded cooking pot. Then the recipe requires two spiced to berries, the berries, which you need you cooking need berries, pots, you need berries, and you need berries, and you so yeah, it gets a little bit complicated. The colonists kind of act more like science centers from Factorio more than colonists though. They don't die or become unhappy and leave. They just either give you love or they don't depending on their current needs. I don't really know if this is necessary information or not and it's not really a pro or con. I just thought I'd let you know. So yeah, that's, that's basically the game. This game is pretty cute. When you finish crafting things, you just Goomba stomp it into existence. New pick, I stomp. New bench, I stomp. New delicate research facility, I stomp. When you or a robot break a tool and then try to use it again, there's this little cartoon cursing above their head. They're just like <laughs> The game definitely has a bit of personality. If you like production chain games that ramp up, damn, this one has you covered. It might just be how I was trying to play it, but moving large piles of materials and then upgrading to new tech tiers definitely is a challenge of expanding what you already have to meet new demands. The general robot programming is intuitive and easy. You definitely don't need to be an engineer programmer man to get results. In fact, being an engineer programmer man might be a negative, but I'll get to that later. It might not be much to say, but the game generally is really solid at what it does. Make and program robots to do anything you can do. I really enjoy moments where I'm happily planning out the next section and all of a sudden, I'm not getting enough love, which means I'm not getting enough food, which I'm not getting enough food, which means I'm not getting enough berries, which means I'm not, I don't have enough bushes, which means I gotta plant more holes, which means I gotta plant more bushes and make more robots and get more berries to make more food and ah! It's pretty fun and even a little addicting watching your robot army maintain your colony and research new tech. Except for a few things. For the most part, I think I can break the cons into two groups. 
There's the this thing is tedious group and the I didn't know I could do this thing group. Individually, they aren't much, but I think they add up. In the first group, this thing is tedious, there are a few things that kind of kill the enjoyment of the game for me. The biggest one is that you have to manually program every robot, and from what I've read on the Steam reviews, this is a big one with other people as well. There's no list of commands to select from, and you can't code your own robots, that's a big no. The dev said visual programming is the only way it's going to be. If you're trying to program your own robots, I'm sorry this is not your game. That's fine with me, but sometimes it's just a little annoying. Like if you want a bot to transport some material over a long distance to where you are, you need to go all the way over there and all the way back to program the bot, and it can just kind of kill the flow a little bit, you know? The worst ones are charge bots. Robots eventually run out of power and you need to wind them back up. You can make a bot to do this, but you need to charge a bot for it to know what to do. After a while, a bot will go out in an area, and before you can get to it to teach a new charge bot, another charge bot that you already have, since you need to overlap a few charge bots, so charge bots will charge other charge bots, and you can't find one. Yeah, I'm sure that made perfect sense. Eventually, you unlock a floppy disk upgrade that lets you copy a bot's code and then paste it to other bots. I really feel like this upgrade takes too long to unlock, and it should really just be easier in the first place. I'd rather have a copy and paste button on the bot UI. Maybe you keep the floppy disk as an upgrade for your Autonaut, and after you unlock it, you can just copy and paste freely whenever you want. Just something to relieve the feeling of, oh boy, I need to double my farm size, that'll be seven more bots I need to program to do very similar things to the other seven that are already on my farm. Speaking of upgrades, you can only apply upgrades to a bot if they are currently idle, not playing their code. To stop a bot, they have to currently not be doing an action, and this is frustrating because sometimes you want to stop a bot to upgrade it or do something else, but it's digging out a piece of turf and it's gonna take like a bajillion seconds before it's done and I can stop it to do what I need to do. I don't understand why I can't stop a bot. I can stop myself mid-action. Next up, tree stumps are not targetable by robots, so you have to dig them all up yourself. You know, I'm trying to make my landscape look okay, like a solid 5 out of 10, and it takes forever to dig up these stupid tree stumps. And when you do dig them up, it makes a hole. The only way to get rid of the hole is to dig the hole with a shovel again. At least I can get a bot to do that part. Finally, on my this thing is tedious list, your bots can be organized into teams, but it sucks. I'm sorry, but bot teams suck. The bots and the teams are on the same tab, and you eventually have to scroll a million miles to try to find and put the right bot on the right team. It would be a lot easier if they just did this. Also, it would be nice if you could make a team of teams so you could organize your bots better, but that's not as important. Now let's move on to the I didn't know I could do this thing column, which was the other major complaint on reviews, but I also experienced my fair share of it. The game has a pretty decent tutorial, but there are a lot of little things that the game doesn't tell you, like you can hold alt and select multiple lines of code at once to move or delete them, and you can also upgrade robots by switching out their parts one by one, or the floppy disk in general, you can build buildings and then delete them, but deleting them doesn't remove them, it puts them in some invisible pocket dimension where you can pull them out and put them wherever you want. This is a good way to automate building buildings. It's pretty easy to miss though. Set a bunch of bots to deliver materials to blueprints in an area and build all your buildings in that area, then delete them and put them where you actually want them to be. There's an inconsistency here though. If you upgrade a building and then delete it, poof! It's gone. But get this, if you move the upgraded building to where you want it, that works. <sighs> okay. The game is mostly pretty polished, but little things like that are less polished? Most of my complaints are like little UI things though, there's nothing game breaking here. I do have one last one though. Sometimes I'd program a robot and it wouldn't work and I'd just be going through it line by line trying to figure out where it broke and- Shit, this is just my actual job. I think Autonauts is a game with a very solid start that gets bogged down by some bad UI limitations the longer you play it and the bigger your colony gets. You eventually just need a better way to program bots in my opinion, individually is just too much. The game isn't in early access, but the devs are planning to do updates. None of my complaints were really with the core gameplay besides the gosh darn diddly dang tree stumps, which actually has partially already been fixed, so it's possible. 
For this review, I played the game for 16 hours. I definitely didn't get anywhere near finishing it, but I think I have a good understanding of the core gameplay loop, and I don't think it's going to dramatically change from where I was to the end. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. The game is available on Steam for $20 or your regional equivalent. And hey, since you made it this far in the video, I actually have an extra copy of this game to give away. But since YouTube is the worst app for communicating with people ever created, you're gonna have to join my Discord to enter and win the key. Link to that is in the description. If you like this video, please smash like. Last video, people did really well at offering comments so I could feed the algorithm. So please keep them coming. I'll try not to be so slow on the next video. See you then, a two lanes out.